one. Hi everybody, Gail Carragher here. I'm dropping some little extra videos for you. I'm using them to sort of answer some frequently asked questions that I get or just delve deeper into some of the things I love and am passionate about, like for example, teacups. So I started recently matching my teacup collection to my books and also intentionally collecting teacups to kind of match my books. And I thought I would show you some of those. Um, you can also see a lot of them on Instagram. I tend to photo my books and teacups a lot together, but this is an inside into everything all at once. So this here is my bookshelf where I have all of my books as first editions. So anytime my book is published in a foreign country, I keep one edition of that for myself and it goes on the shelf. So as you can see, the older the book, uh, the more editions I have because it's been out long enough for it to get translated, etc. So here is Solace, which is my first book, and it has a little matched teacup here, which is a lusterware teacup that, in a little fluted shape, um, and it, it, the color kind of matches the cover. It was a gift from my father, who's given me quite a few little teacups over the years. And there isn't much room, so I don't have um, more teacups for these guys, although I do I do own them, I just don't have them on display here. So we'll move down to some of the latter books in the series where there's a little more room to show off teacups as well as books. So this one here is a newer acquisition that goes with Heartless, although I've photographed it with other books as well because I'm really fond of it. I like the sort of solid coloration of it and of course the very pink cover. And I also really love the wiggle of the, the shape of both the cup and the saucer. It's a demi-tasse teacup. Demi-tasse teacups are small by definition, that's what they're called, and um, the theory that I know is that they were originally developed for hot chocolate because chocolate was very, very, very highly valued. So it was always traditionally served in these very tiny cups. Um, and also, of course, then they, it was used for espresso later on. Then we'll move on to Timeless. Here's Timeless. This is a luster wear. Luster is the name when you have this sort of metallic um, and iridescent sheen to pottery. And this is in a satsuma shape, which means that the lip of the teacup comes in slightly. It's my favorite shape to drink out of, and so I tend to intentionally collect satsuma shapes. Obviously, this is kind of a modern design, um, but I just really love it, and I, I love the little details that it has. So. And of course it matches Timeless perfectly. <laughs> oh. um, and here we have another new demi-tasse to the collection. I, I collected it because it has this oval shape to it. And again, it has the wiggly rim and a wiggly saucer rim. And I just, um, aesthetically, I found it really pleasing. I love the color combination. And I have it sitting here with some of the special editions that relate to the whole Parasol Protectorate universe. And of course, right here is my Alex Award. The only major award that Solis ever won was the Alex Award, but of course that's the greatest thing ever as far as I'm concerned, because this is an award given by librarians, and I love the librarians. And um, it is basically um, it's given by the American Library Association to a book that was written for adults but would appeal to younger readers as well. So yay for the Alex Award. Moving on to the Custard Protocol series is Shelf. This is its shelf here. We're going to start with Prudence. Uh, for Prudence, I have this lovely pink and very bold slashed gold demi tasse teacup. And that's because for it, it kind of is partly the spirit of the characters in these books. Uh, Prudence is a very bold character, Rue. So I gave her a very bold teacup. And the same thing here for Imprudence. It's another Satsuma shaped one. I'm thinking this is later, um, probably 1960s or so. But I just love how um, colorful and vibrant the teacup is, as well as the shape, of course. And I thought it suited Imprudence very well. And here we have Competence. Competence is, of course, uh, Primrose's book. So I have a more delicate kind of elegant little teacup for it. It's also remarkably difficult to find teacups that are in this particular color profile with the greens and the blues, um, but I found this one that has a lovely apple green edging to it, um, which I just really thought it was a very pleasing design, so that's why I picked up that one. 
it's um, not very old, this up-down shape, which is heavily influenced by the espresso culture, um, tends to indicate a later period, but I still really like it. <laughs> Moving on. So here is where I have all of my independently produced and hybrid books, as well as a stack of um, contributor copies of anthologies that I've contributed to, and, uh, that, and sort of older works and sort of more obscure things. <laughs> So, uh, starting over here. So here we have um, a lovely little purple teacup for both Romancing the Inventor and uh, Poisoner Protect, since the covers are very, very similar. And then we have this little demi tasse that I actually picked up because it went with the Romancing the Werewolf cover. Um, I thought it was sort of beautiful yet quite masculine with its in its simplicity. So that's why it appealed to me. I've got How to Marry here because it's newly out and I haven't figured out where it goes on the shelf yet so it's just sitting there for the time being and there we have the Sumage Solution uh, series and uh, it will continue with the other books on the top and I actually chose this one for it now this is not a teacup actually uh, as you may be able to see it has no handle so I'm thinking this is actually um, an ice serving, so either uh, shaved ice or ice cream or sherbet or something. It might be a, um, for in between courses as a palate cleanse cleanser, they probably would have served that sort of thing in this bowl. Um, so I guess it, it's technically a bowl <laughs> rather than a teacup, but it is the same sort of shape as a teacup. And I collected it because I thought, um, how much fun to imagine that this is this is a form of pottery that developed specifically for werewolves to feed them like delicately chopped raw meat. <laughs> um, I just thought that was kind of a charming idea. So here it is sitting with my werewolf series. Finally, this here, uh, these two shelves are the shelves for my um, finishing school series and as you can see, here is the Etiquette and Espionage stack. I chose this little teacup to go with this stack. It's a very delicate, traditional, old English style teacup, I would call it. Um, I like the pattern because it reminded me of very early Victorian style, even Regency style with the delicacy of the painting. So um, I kind of felt like it was period appropriate, I guess, to the Etiquette and Espionage books. Um, and, and it also has this sort of solidity to it in a way that's like the, the way that the Finishing School series is using sort of these finer arts, so to speak, of manners and etiquette um, with this underbelly of sort of steel and, and death. So um, I love the sort of innocence of that cup. And for uh, curtsies and conspiracies, I have a full-size teacup, which is a little dusty. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, this is actually a very old cup that I, uh, for to me, that I collected many, many, many years ago. I've had it a really long time and drunk out of it often. Um, and it's it's pansies, which is one of my mother's favorite flowers. And it also just matches really well to the curtsies and conspiracies books. So that that's why I chose that one. And then for waistcoats and weaponry. Uh, because it is all Sid Haig's story to an extent, and it's all about the King Air pack, I chose um, a teacup that has the Scottish thistle on it. And also, of course, it matches the color. And lastly, this might be pretty difficult to see, but down here at the bottom is the Little Manners and Mutiny stack. And here we have another lusterware full-size teacup um, with a kind of brilliant pattern that I, uh, I thought went really well with Manners and Mutiny. So there it is. That's my uh, Teacup Matches book collection for everybody to see. And please feel free to ask me questions about anything you see on the shelves. And maybe we'll do some more of these in the future if you're interested. And this is Gail Carriger signing off. Bye.